The impact uh, of Brexit for the optimistic 52%. We have Ruth Lee, advisor to the Arbuthnot Banking Group and Leave supporter, uh, and Leave supporter, I should say, and for the gloomy 48% economist and author George Magnus. Thank you both very much for uh, coming in. Uh, Ruth, if I can start off uh, with you, uh, people are pretty gloomy out there. You were saying that uh, this will usher in a, a great new period of prosperity, but people aren't feeling that at the moment. Well, we haven't left yet, and that's when, of course, there'll be the great new period of prosperity. And I speak as an economist, therefore my forecasts are absolutely bang on the nail. Yes. But joking apart, the economy has done reasonably well after the Brexit vote, and of course a lot of people saying, not least of all the Treasury, that there could well be a recession if there were a Brexit vote. But in fact, growth in the third quarter, 0.6%, was exactly the same as it was in the second quarter. Going into this year, I suspect there is some grain of truth in the survey, in the sense that inflation will be picking up, as Ed Conway was saying, could be two and a half, two and three quarter, three percent by the end of the year. That will hit real incomes. That will actually have an impact on consumption. Because wages probably won't Absolutely. keep Absolutely. And I don't think wages will keep pace with mm. the increase in inflation. But against that, of course, exports should do better because of the weaker pound. There are pluses and minuses of having a weaker currency. And it was quite interesting that the market survey that came out yesterday on manufacturing industry was pretty buoyant and I thought that some of the comments from the uh, the, the business people here uh, suggested that perhaps things weren't too bad so this year I suspect there will be something of a slowdown in the economy one and a half to two percent growth but that, sh that, that to me is satisfactory so George Magnus a, b a bump in the road uh, nothing more than that well, it's definitely a bump in the road, and I think the um, emphasis that a lot of people place on the rise in inflation uh, is really important. I mean, in, in actually what otherwise looks like a, a not-too-bad global economic outlook, uh, if, if politics didn't matter, um, you know, the American economy is going to do okay and they're going to get some fiscal stimulus. The, even the European economy is doing not bad for, for Europe. So I, I think um, uh, I'm, I'm not actually, you know, apoplectic about the outlook for the UK in 2017. It, it'll be lower growth, higher inflation. The mix will be less good than it has been. People will definitely feel the pinch. You know, some of the kind of attractive mortgage offers that have been available are being withdrawn by financial institutions because bond yields, guilt yields are starting to rise. Um, so, you know, it'll be more uncomfortable, but it's not going to be a disaster. But I think we should also have a kind of a bigger perspective because the, the impact of disruption to trade, investment and migration is corrosive and glacial. And we will really only see this cumulatively over a period of years unless the government is smart enough to have a sensible mitigation strategy. It has to mitigate the effects of leaving the EU, and we don't really have one of those yet. Ruth Lee, so uh, the effects are going to be felt in the, in, in the long term and they could be corrosive. Well, as I say, I'm optimistic once Brexit is, is, has happened because we'll be able to decide our own trade deals, we'll be able to decide our own immigration policy, which I don't think will be draconian, so I don't think it'll have such a major But just impact because we it. decide them doesn't mean that other people are going to agree uh, with them. Absolutely. Uh, but this is my speculation as to what a government could do. And, of course, that, that, that also we will have some, uh, some advantages because we'll save something on the contribution. So... Um, and there's a possibility of repealing some of the regulations that business finds so irksome. So I think once Brexit happens, that all those possibilities are having a real competitiveness boost on the economy. In the meantime, I don't disagree with George about the uncertainties. And again, that came out in the in the film that come on, you know, what's going to happen, guys? And I think this was something to do, of course, with Ivan Rogers's uh, resignation today. Um, but actually, I watched Theresa May's speech at the party conference, the first speech she gave on the Sunday and she said we're going to control immigration well that means out of the single market why not just say it she said of course to having our own trade deals we you know we're going to be global Britain and all this business and Liam Fox has got this job of international trade that means out of the customs union why not just say it and then of course I agree with George again that it would be interesting if there could be some sort of transitional agreement to minimize a disruption like the continuation of tariff-free trade on goods and, and some deal for financial services but whether that will actually be able to be negotiated, I don't know, and I suspect nobody knows at this stage.
And, and George, about this transitional idea, I mean, obviously the, the Brexiters are suggesting that any transitional detail could just mean that we, we gradually keep on the same kind of agreements, roughly, that we've got at the moment, and we don't actually leave. I mean, that is the fear of Brexiters, but you think transitional uh, deals are, are potentially the only way to, to prevent a cliff edge? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, I mean, I think this is absolutely key in 2017, um, particularly given the other news background that we have today and that obviously you've covered before we came on. Um, so um, assuming that Article 50 um, negotiations are triggered in March or soon after or whenever, um, I, it, it'll become quite clear, I th well I don't know about quite clear, I think it'll become clear soon enough whether there is going to be this um, transitional arrangement which I think will be really important for anchoring business confidence um, over the medium term. If it, if it appears that this is a non-start or if there's, uh, you know, d the negotiations, you know, with Brussels and with the other EU countries, if it looks like this is going to be, uh, you know, difficult or won't happen, I think, uh, I think we will see a material change in the way in which people think about the future and about, uh, about trading and investment. I would say also, I, you know, just because I, I know there's a lot of kind of optimism amongst Brexiteers about, you know, we want to be a beacon of free trade and, uh, you know, we're going to create agreements here, there and everywhere. Just because you want it to happen, I don't think it means it's going to happen. The, the world trading but, but environment also, is becoming really, really harsh. But, but also conversely, though, by you being perhaps gloomier, aren't you also having an impact on, on, on confidence in business? I mean, this is one of the main arguments of the, of the Brexit camp, that you're talking down the economy by, you know, using words such as I think corrosive. Yeah, I think that's sour grapes. I, th I think, um, I mean, you know, we are where we are. I'm, I mean, we're not trying to change it. But we need to have a mitigation strategy. You have to mitigate the negative consequences of disruption to trade and investment and migration. Um, and, um, and, and the government doesn't, I mean, you know, by popular, I think, acclaim, not acclaim, but agreement, I think people agree that the government doesn't really know what Brexit actually means at the moment. We need to have, the, you know, the government, this government or future government certainly articulate a, a strategy of mitigation. How are we going to offset these things by looking at our domestic economy? Better. Well, hopefully we will be getting you, some clarity you do need as to the cheer year up, progresses. George, you do need to cheer up. Uh, Ruth, uh, Ruth Lee and George Magnus both, thank you very much for, for your thoughts. Uh, now we turn to some uh, breaking news.